Lease Contract Articles in the Civil Code under lease that were asked in the bar more than once. Lease of Rural and Urban Lands Article 1650 When in the contract of lease of things there is no express prohibition, the lessee may sublet the thing leased, in whole or in part, without prejudice to his responsibility for the performance of the contract toward the lessor. Article 1670 If at the end of the contract the lessee should continue enjoying the thing leased for fifteen days with the acquiescence of the lessor, and unless a notice to the contrary by either party has previously been given, it is understood that there is an implied new lease, not for the period of the original contract, but for the time established in Article 1682 and 1687-1687. The other terms of the original contract shall be revived. Article 1649. The lessee cannot assign the lease without the consent of the lessor unless there is a stipulation to the contrary. Rights and Obligations of Lessor and Lessee Article 1651 Without prejudice to his obligation toward the sublessor, the sublessee is bound to the lessor for all acts which refer to the use and preservation of the thing leased in the manner stipulated between the lessor and the lessee. 1551 Article 1652 the sublessee is subsidiarily liable to the lessor for any rent due from the lessee. However, the sublessee shall not be responsible beyond the amount of rent due from him, in accordance with the terms of the sublease, at the time of the extrajudicial demand by the lessor. Article 6073. The lessor may judicially eject the lessee for any of the following causes. 1. When the period agreed upon or that which is fixed for the duration of leases under Articles 1682 and 1687, has expired. 2. Lack of payment of the price stipulated. 3. Violation of any of the conditions agreed upon in the contract. 4. When the lessee devotes the thing leased to any use or service not stipulated which causes the deterioration thereof or if he does not observe the requirement in number 2 of Article 1657, as regards the use thereof. Article 1654. The lessor is obliged. 1. To deliver the thing which is the object of the contract in such a condition as to render it fit for the use intended. 2. To make on the same during the lease all the necessary repairs in order to keep it suitable for the use to which it has been devoted unless there is a stipulation to the contrary. 3. To maintain the lessee in the peaceful and adequate enjoyment of the lease for the entire duration of the contract. Article 1659. If the lessor or the lessee should not comply with the obligations set forth in Articles 1654 and 1657, the aggrieved party may ask for the rescission of the contract and indemnification for damages, or only the latter, allowing the contract to remain in force. Article 1723. The engineer or architect who drew up the plans and specifications for a building is liable for damages if within 15 years from the completion of the structure, the same should collapse by reason of a defect in those plans and specifications or due to the defects in the ground. The contractor is likewise responsible for the damages if the edifice falls, within the same period, on account of defects in the construction or the use of materials of inferior quality furnished by him, or due to any violation of the terms of the contract. If the engineer or architect supervises the construction, he shall be solidarily liable with the contractor. Acceptance of the building, after completion, does not imply a waiver of any of the cause of action by reason of any defect mentioned in the preceding paragraph. The action must be brought within ten years following the collapse of the building. Article 2192. If damage referred to in the two preceding articles should be the result of any defect in the construction mentioned in Article 1723, the third person suffering damages may proceed only against the engineer or architect or contractor in accordance with said article, within the period therein fixed. Article 1670. 
if at the end of the contract the lessee should continue enjoying the thing leased for 15 days with the acquiescence of the lessor, and unless a notice to the contrary by either party has previously been given, it is understood that there is an implied new lease, not for the period of the original contract, but for the time established in Articles 1682 and 1687. The other terms of the original contract shall be revived. Article 1678. If the lessee makes, in good faith, useful improvements which are suitable to the use for which the lease is intended, without altering the form or substance of the property leased, the lessor upon the termination of the lease shall pay the lessee one half of the value of the improvements at that time. Should the lessor refuse to reimburse said amount, the lessee may remove the improvements even though the principal thing may suffer damage thereby. He shall not, however, cause any more impairment upon the property leased than is necessary. With regard to ornamental expenses, the lessee shall not be entitled to any reimbursement, but he may remove the ornamental objects, provided no damage is caused to the principal thing, and the lessor does not choose to retain them by paying their value at the time the lease is extinguished. Special Provisions for Leases of Rural Lands Article 1680. The lessee shall have no right to a reduction of the rent on account of the sterility of the land leased, or by reason of the loss of fruits due to ordinary fortuitous events, but he shall have such right in case of the loss of more than one half of the fruits through extraordinary and unforeseen fortuitous events, save always when there is a specific stipulation to the contrary. Extraordinary fortuitous events are understood to be, fire, war, pestilence, unusual flood, locusts, earthquake, or others which are uncommon, and which the contracting parties could not have reasonably foreseen.